Hi everyone, Nix user here. So today we're going to take a look at Nix OS. And no, that's not a shameless plug for my distro channel, Linux channel, free and open source channel. No, rather, it is this operating system here, Nix OS. So this is a very interesting distribution in that it takes a very different approach to package management. Uh, and to configuration management. In fact, I would argue that configuration management and package management in this distribution are one and the same thing. Basically, we'll take a brief look here. Uh, it's declarative. That means you describe in the config file what you want the system to be like, and the system then uh, does so. Uh, it it, uh, it rebuilds the system based on your requirements. It's what they call a reliable uh, system where you can do atomic upgrades and rollbacks. Not something I've yet done, but we might look at that in a, um, a video where we have a bit more time. DevOps friendly. So yeah, basically it's uh, easy to deploy, uh, an easy to deploy system. So yeah, uh, I came across this distribution because it was uh, basically flagged in DistroWatch as it's known. And I thought, well, let's take a look at this distribution. And uh, it was a bit interesting because when I installed it, it, well, it was a little bit tricky because I wasn't used to how to install this thing. In fact, there's a, a, there's a, a book called The Handbook, the Nix OS Handbook, and we should um, take a look at that right now. So it's Nix OS manual, sorry. Um, so the installation is not as hard as Gentoo or Linux from scratch uh, or Arch Linux for that matter. It's it's pretty easy going. All you pretty much need to do manually is configure the partitions on the particular physical volume that you want to use, uh, create the file systems themselves and off you go. The one thing I would say, however, there is an issue with clear with UEFI systems where it cannot write to the UEFI system, so it tries to use EFI Boot Manager and it fails, but what you need to do then is uh, do it yourself, basically. You need to do it yourself and, uh, and, and run the uh, EFI Boot Manager command. And some of these commands are a little bit misleading because like for example it's uh, just the way that you arrange the partitions up here might not necessarily um, correlate to the particular partitions down there so just take that as uh, best advice that you can really get there and, and actually read it properly and, and make intelligent choices there yourself uh, because I made a stuff up the first time and ended up with not enough space on my root uh, partition so Let's take a look at what Wikipedia says basically. So NixOS is a Linux distribution built on top of the Nix package manager. So let's just go back a little bit there and take a look at the Nix package manager. The Nix is a cross-platform package management system differing from traditional package managers. Uh, Nix utilizes a purely functional deployment model where software is installed into unique directories. Aha! Uh -huh. Now that's kind of interesting. How about we pull up console and see what that actually means exactly. So if I go which ffmpeg, that's kind of interesting because it's not saying slash user slash bin slash ffmpeg. And in fact, if, and let's just see if I can get away with this, if I go find forward slash my name and, um, okay, and we'll just go and get rid of all that error material. Give that a little bit of a moment to run and you can see that the first directory that it finds is this nix store dc blah 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 this hash so it uses the hash for dependency management and unique positioning of the binary itself now whether or not it'll find the um, this soft link that we had uh, above here in fact I'll just do it uh, again if I go into in fact I'll just do it here if I go which uh, FFmpeg, you see that it's different to this. So I don't know whether it's going to find it or not, but let's just let it continue. Give that a moment, and uh, we'll see what it uh, has to say there. So there are a few FFmpegs uh, loitering there, but so far 
not this current system one. So that's kind of interesting too. So what we should do is just go file, find what it is. Oh, we don't have the command file. So that's not going to be very much use. Maybe we can use that as an example later. So anyway, the point of it is, is that binaries uh, don't follow the file um, hierarch well, the hierarchical file system standard. So, or well, the file system hierarchy, I think. I don't know what the correct terminology is there. Probably if we go back to the Nix OS uh, here, let's have a look. Hierarchy, hierarchy. Yeah, the file system hierarchy standard. So, you have some uh, issues, I suppose, if you're new to NixOS, in that you're not going to find things where you expect them to be. It seems that things are isolated a little bit. Binary packages and uh, their components are isolated a little bit. So, yeah, I mean, we pretty much got the, the deal before. Reproducible system configuration, I guess that goes into the DevOps model there a little bit. Um, so, yeah, but basically it is an entire configuration system. I'm not sure what the fascination really is with declarative as opposed to imperative uh, system configuration and package management, uh, except to say that it seems to be what the headline features are here. So reliable and DevOps friendly would, would be the two things that I can uh, think of that are, are important. Now, um, what I will do is just show you something that is um, interesting about the package management and and while we're at it we might, might be able to install file uh, while we're at it so that way we can have a look at uh, the ffmpeg file that we we're looking for before so let's um now the let's let's take a look here but i want to show you that um nix os uh, keeps its configs uh, in here now there is an automatic generator of a config so you don't need to uh, worry about that. That's actually one of the thing, one of the um, uh, procedures or, or steps that you follow when you're installing it is to automatically generate a configuration file. Uh, there's an extensive set of, of settings in here and I suggest you take a look at the installation manual um, to set these up. Um, an interesting one was actually that I, I set Australia slash WST and then uh, although uh, I was getting UTC time in the command line, I wasn't getting the correct time over here, in fact I was getting no time over there, so it was kind of interesting. You can see here some packages that I've uh, installed, uh, look wget and vim, um, I think were there by default, but um, commented out, this entire section here was just commented out. I've added Firefox, FF, FFmpeg and MPV, um, so you'll be able to do the same. You can enable the X11 windowing system, but when you first boot into NixOS, there is not so much in the way of a, uh, a windowing system, it's just the, the command line. So if you feel a little bit uncomfortable in the command line, uh, you best be getting over to this config and uh, updating things. So what we'll do, let's just see if the command, uh, rather the package for file exists. No guarantees here. So nix os uh, rebuild Hmm. switch I think it is. So it's just going to read that configuration uh, there and let's see if it can actually find the program file. I haven't had too much bad luck with finding particular commands that are pretty self-explanatory such as fi uh, Firefox, I shouldn't say commands, I guess uh, programs. Uh, you can see here it's going through the motions of setting up the config based on this new change and it doesn't take too long. It's not the fastest distribution I've ever come across, but it's certainly not the slowest either. Um, I don't know if the hashing and particular location of items uh, is a big deal in terms of slowing this distribution down a little bit. But not to forget as well, it's running off a physical um, spinning hard drive. So it's a mechanical drive and it's not going to be as fast obviously as um, my Debian install on the solid state drive from Samsung. That's an Evo uh, solid state drive, so it's, it's reasonably quick. So let's see how it's going, and it's done. Okay, so let's just see if we've got that. And now we do have the command file. So what we shall do, okay, is we'll just back out of there. Um, 
Now, we just go which ffmpeg, and you can see that's the command we want to, to take a look at what it actually is. And if I go file, and you can see it's a symbolic link. And in fact, I could have gotten away with just going ls dash l that guy. And it would show me before without installing file, but it serves to show you that how to install uh, programs and the like. So we'll just go back to, oh, yeah, because I was in uh, as root before, uh, the vim event is not found. So we'll just go back in to root and take a look at this. There's a whole bunch going on here. I suggest you take a look through. Adding users is a bit weird. So you've got this users.extra users.nix user and then you put the specification in. Uh, you know, you've got the group ID there, or the user ID, uh, which has an interesting co uh, consequence because if I go, for example, if I go uh, touch uh, this file, okay, and then I go lsshl, and say I wanted to change the ownership of this file to nix user and the group ownership to nix user. It's kind of not going to work because uh, if I go to own uh, nix user nix user this file, it's going to say invalid group. So instead, I have to use the group ID, which is 1000, which is basically how I set up that. Uh, you can see in the the config just before that I had um, set it up as user ID 1000. So yeah, you can see here too which version. Uh, you're currently on which is 18.03 so my last thoughts on this would I use this distribution well first of all Debian would have to die uh, dev1 as well would have to die uh, but apart from that look what other contenders would there be I mean OpenSUSE is a great distribution um, yeah, Fedora possibly but Fedora's got some funny shenanigans uh, with its file uh, system hierarchy so I'm not necessarily sure that it's not a very good vanilla configuration in some ways. Uh, Nix OS, would I use it? I potentially would. It's a bit of a weird one because I'm not used to this declarative configuration management. It's not to say that I disagree with it or anything like that. Um, it seems to be perfectly fine. I mean, you can, if you um, look at the manual, or go back to the manual, you can actually install uh, packages on an ad hoc basis. Just let me try and find that for you. Uh, maybe we can hock. So yeah, uh, package management and you can do ad hoc and in custom, pa yeah, you can do ad hoc package management here. I haven't gone through the whole suite of options to be honest because it, this is not a distribution that I, it's, go it's not going to be my go-to distribution but I did think it interesting enough to, to take you guys uh, through it. Um, that being said, there are other distributions which use the Nix package manager. Uh, these guys here, I've heard of Wix before, which I think is uh, interesting. You know, interesting enough. I think that's actually a, uh, a free software foundation. Yeah, uh, it's a GNU.org distribution, so they have their. It's a package manager, but I believe there is actually a proper distribution around around that one. So uh, yeah, you got the Greek system distribution. So yeah, I mean it's a, you know, it's an interesting distribution. Uh, do I think you should give it a try? Absolutely, give it a try. Um, I've shown you today basically how to install packages. It's not very difficult. It, how to add users? That's not very difficult. I think it kind of simplifies things a lot. And if you needed to replicate a particular type of build, uh, it wouldn't be terribly difficult to do so. Um, and that's one of the things I think is great about this. If you were moving from one version to another, as long as the, the Nix language itself uh, remains uh, compatible between versions, I don't see any reason why you couldn't have uh, the exact same setup virtually, of course, uh, sans particular packages and versions uh, from one distribution to another. So anyway guys, I'm going to leave it here. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please, if you did, uh, press that like button uh, and hit the subscribe and definitely, most definitely share these videos with your friends. Uh, you know, because getting awareness out there really, you know, I get a kick out of when people uh, like the videos and uh, when we get more subscriber base. It gives me, you know, even though I'm not getting monetized at the moment, it's more of an incentive uh, as I see the numbers uh, creep up. And in fact, uh, at the moment, 
you know, I've got, I, I'm not, I know I'm not showing the subscriber numbers, but we're, we've uh, hit 538 subscribers and, um, you know, that's a, it's a real kick when you go from like under 400 to being midway, almost midway through 500. And I know it's just the start and I'm hoping to, to make this a, a good thing. Uh, so anyway, guys, I'll leave it there. Hope you enjoyed this video. Remember, like and subscribe and share. Bye now.